Elizabeth Chapel, a lifelong entrepreneur who finally found my niche. After years of new ideas and jumping from business to business, I figured out how to turn a craft into a successful career. In 2016, I started a monthly subscription box for quilters. That little startup has grown into a thriving, multiple six-figure business that I am so proud of. As a published author, designer of fabrics and patterns being sold throughout the world, my favorite thing to do is to teach others how to grow a career of their dreams. Each week you'll hear from me or from other guests who are creative entrepreneurs, so you can learn exactly what to do and what not to do to grow a career that's more rewarding and successful than you ever thought possible. If you're ready to turn your craft into a career that you love, I am so excited you're here. Welcome to the Craft to Career podcast. I am so excited to have an alumni from the Craft to Career course from 2021. We had to go back and look, when exactly were you on the podcast? It is Ladine of Sugar Stitch Quilt Co. And I cannot wait for you to meet her and hear all that she has been up to since she graduated from the Craft Your Career course. However, I want to share this very fun and brand new podcast review from Amy of Honey Girl Quilts and Crafts. Amy says, I have been playing catch up on this podcast as I just recently discovered it. And I cannot tell you how much the information has helped me and encouraged me especially episodes 85 and 86. Elizabeth is honest, vulnerable, and candid about her own experiences. She always finds a way to find positives in any negative experience, and I love her thought process that success is available to anyone and a rising tide lifts all boats. She is encouraging, helpful, and gives tools and actionable steps to help make you and your business a success. Elizabeth, thank you for being vulnerable and honest. It helps me to relate to you through my own experiences and makes me feel like you truly care about your listeners and want them to be successful. I hope to someday meet you in person and tell you how truly inspiring you are. Amy, thank you so much. It really gives me chills to read this. We will definitely have to meet in person. I don't know when or where that's going to be, but it will happen. And when it does, say, I'm Amy, the one who left that podcast review, and I cannot wait to meet you. So thank you so much for leaving that review. And if you have not left a review yet for the Craft Your Career podcast, go ahead and take a moment to leave a review. You can either just tap the five stars or if you leave a fun little message like that, I love to read those and give you a shout out here on the podcast. But now I'm excited to introduce you to Ladine. Ladine, I am so glad to have you here. Thanks for being here. And for our listeners, can you just introduce yourself and tell us who you are in the quilting world? Yes, thank you so much for having me. My name is Ladine Watson, and I am the owner of Sugar Stitches Quilt Co. Awesome. And our listeners can't see you, but I see you. And there is a beautiful quilt behind you. We should put a picture in the show notes, but can you tell me about that quilt? Yes, that is actually the my watercolors quilt. That is, um, we're currently doing a quilt along with American Patchwork and Quilting. It was in um, last month's, it, technically it was the April issue 182 of the magazine on the cover. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was so super excited and honored to be chosen for the cover. And they... Um, chose that for a quilt along. So that's going on right now on their page. It's mainly held on their Facebook page. Okay. And it really looks like you took a paintbrush and kind of dabbed it and the watercolor kind of goes out. Was that- The colors are great. Uh, Yeah. No, it's all Allison Glass fabrics and it was a bundle. Um, It's her Sunprint 2021. So it was an older collection that I had. And it just really worked. And then American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine did an amazing job with the pictures. I sent them the quilt and they took all the pictures for the magazine and they just turned out amazing. Yeah, well, it's an amazing quilt. So, you know, you can only take good photographs (laughs) if it's a good thing. So, (laughs) Well, Well, thank you. Yeah. So 
It's been really fun to watch your business grow. So you were in the craft to career course in what, 2021? Is that what we were? Twenty, Yep. March, 2021. How did you decide to become a quilt pattern designer? And I actually, I'm selfishly really curious why you decided to take the craft to career course instead of the quilt pattern writing course. Well, it's funny because I actually debated back and forth about that. And I, so to answer your first question about why I wanted to become a quilt pattern designer first, and then that'll tie into the other answer. Um, So I'm a self-taught quilter. Um, Everything that I found, you know, was online, YouTube and different tutorials. And as I was working with those, I'd always find that my brain wouldn't quite process some of the quilt patterns and I looked at things differently and then sometimes I end up making things more complicated than they needed to be. So I ended up writing the patterns or just sort of amending them so that my brain would better understand them. And so then I thought, well, maybe I can do this on my own and and make a business out of this. And so when I first found you, uh, your craft a career class was actually enrolling and you, it wasn't time yet for the pattern writing class. So ah. that's why I took that one first. Um, but then it also, I think it gave me a better foundation to understand what I was getting into, that I had my ideas about a business, but I wanted to make sure that I was, I wasn't leading with my heart necessarily from, you know, from making that decision to start a business. Um, everyone loves quilting. And of course, there's more to a, a quilt pattern business than just making pretty quilts. So I wanted to make sure that I was prepared for that. So I'm, I'm actually really glad that I that I took the class first. That is really cool. And now I'm very curious, what kinds of things when you read a quilt pattern, do you feel like you view differently? You know, like when you say you write your own patterns, how are mm-hmm. they different from a typical pattern? I think in the explanation, and I do this in life too, like I don't like to assume that anybody knows everything. And I think that was part of my frustration with a lot of patterns that they just start off and I'm like, I don't even know what they're talking about or I don't understand. So Um, that was one thing that I really wanted to make sure that no matter if you're a beginner or you're an experienced quilter, that you can pick up one of my patterns and understand um, what's going on. And then the other aspect is just finding different ways to make, for example, half square triangles, that if if a pattern has a lot of half square triangles, maybe you suggest making the eight at a time method um, instead of just making them two at a time. And for my brain, that just translated easier because, um, you know, instead of making, you know, 500 half square triangles, two at a time, I would get bored and just want to move on Mm -hmm. and give up. So to me, for a pattern like that, it made sense to make them quicker Mm -hmm. um, with a different method. So I try to, to think about those things. I know everybody obviously doesn't think the way that I do. Um, but to give the suggestions of, well, this pattern does this, um, in this way. And I've been seeing a lot of that in the, um, American patchwork and quilting Facebook group quilt along their, their quilt along group, um, because the pattern does have four to time flying geese. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I haven't ever done those before. I don't understand. And I actually have a YouTube video that I, um, published before the pattern came out. And so a lot of people are going there and they're like, wow, I've never tried that before. This is great. And so I think just not assuming that everybody knows what you know. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, because they're like saying four at a time flying geese, you know, to some of us, it's like, well, we know about that. But there's so many people that don't and they may have been quilting for, you know, quadruple the time that we've been quilting. Right, exactly. Well, and also, I just remember the very first quilt pattern that I picked up Thank goodness I had a friend across the street who knew how to quilt because I didn't understand what it was talking about. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And, you know, this these terms, we just, we write patterns assuming everyone's where we are. But for those people who are just learning to quilt, it's it can be a very frustrating experience trying to understand that. Absolutely. And also just figuring, like sometimes uh, pattern designers will not 
give you the exact math that you need. And then they assume that you'll be able to figure it out yourself. And even though I write quilt patterns, my math is horrible. That's why I love my, <laughs> I love my tech editor. Same. Um, and um, because I just, I'll, I'll look at my own pattern 50 times and I'll still mess something up. So it was frustrating to look at a pattern and then be like, oh, I have to figure this out for myself. So um, but it wasn't just the idea of writing the quilt patterns. I had so many ideas. Um, if you'll remember when we, when I had class with you and we had my, um, my coaching time, mm -hmm. I just had so many ideas and it, it's just that creativeness that I wanted to do something with. And, um, and actually my first pattern was line of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, and I had that, uh, you know, a very clear idea of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to share with others more than anything. Which impressed me the very first time we talked and had that coaching call with you because you mm -hmm. leaned into your intuition. And clearly that's been a good guide for you, but it impressed me right off the bat. So I'm very curious if you can speak to to your intuition, to going with your gut, your heart, how, whatever you want to call that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I think it's because originally why I even started this as a business. And it was because I needed the stress relief. Um, I have had, you know, in my adult life, I've been in one major career, um, an area for a long time. I don't want to date myself, but it's been <laughs> a long time. And I really just needed stress relief. I needed something that was going to be enjoyable to me. And that's why I started quilting. And I never wanted to forget that even now, like I could, I could think of ideas that, wow, they might sell really well, but if I don't feel it, then it's defeating the purpose. And so, um, I think that I don't want to feel the pressure mm -hmm. to do something just because it's a popular thing or because it's going to appease the internet. I want to do what I enjoy doing, but also what I feel right about doing and what I hear from others that they want to see in quilt patterns. And then also, you know, the educational pieces that I offer too. Well, I can't say enough how much I think that's Amazing. A and it's going to help you avoid burnout. And it's going to help you mm -hmm. love what you do because you're being true to you. And it's not easy. Uh, has that been hard for you? Yeah, it has been hard for me. So, you know, enter social media discussion. <laughs> so yeah. it is, uh, you know, I have a love hate relationship with Instagram. I, I love it. And I've grown so quickly on there. And I love everybody that I interact with there, but it it is really hard to show up there because you there's this pressure to be this, you know, give you this perfect little picture of everything going on when you don't see the disaster in the background. And um, I think that's been really hard, you know, in different periods of my life, you know, when I'm like, can I show up? And if I can't show up 100%, then unfortunately, I just won't show up. Mm -hmm. Um and, you know, that's not always a good thing, but I'm a, I'm more of a private person. I don't share a lot of, you know, personal information, you know, on Instagram or anything, you know, public like that. But then you get penalized in, um, on the platform for something like that. Um, I've had some health issues over the past year and I still tried to be as present as I could, but as soon as I wasn't, it was like, oh, you know, then your engagement just tanks. Yeah. And so that's been, I think the, the, it's been the biggest challenge, but then also it's given me the biggest opportunity to branch out into other areas. Oh, yay. Okay. I love that. So what are these other areas? <laughs> well, first of all, well, I just want to say, uh -huh. I'm so glad too, because I really do not love that feeling of needing to be tied to Instagram or any one platform. So this makes me very happy to hear. So I have always been a teacher of some sort. Um, on the side, it's never been a full-time job for me. I've been an adjunct professor at a university. Um, and then I've, I've um, taught classes on a corporate level as well with, you know, different companies that I work for. So I really enjoy teaching. And again, going back to like a quilt pattern business, it was something that I did on the side because I enjoyed it. I didn't want it to be tied to a full-time position because then I felt like that would take the joy out of it. So I've always loved teaching. And I noticed 
reels have done very well for me. And I always tell people, you know, I get a lot of questions about how do I, you know, make my reel do better? And how do you do this and this? And really, it comes down to providing value. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the entertainment, like no one wants to see me um, dancing in my sewing room (laughs) or, you know, anything crazy (laughs) like that. They don't want to see that they want value. And so the reels that I've, that I've, done where I'm showing a technique or something like that always do the best. And out of that, I would get comments and messages and people are like, oh, but it goes so fast. You went too fast. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but that's Instagram, you know, or I don't like the music. I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, you have, (laughs) you have to choose trending audio and, and things like that. So I, I really felt like I wanted to, to add more value to what I was offering everyone. So it's like, it doesn't help if I'm showing you a tutorial and it has to be in 30 seconds sped up by 10 Mm -hmm. because I have to meet Instagram's rules. And like I said, I love Instagram, but it was, it was frustrating because I was trying to offer that value and teach those, those different techniques. And so I started a YouTube channel just recently Hmm. and it has grown so much and I have enjoyed it just incredibly. It's been amazing. Um, But it's given me the opportunity to listen to what my customers or my followers say they like to know about. And then I create those videos and then I can put it on YouTube and they can watch the full thing. Um, If you don't like the music, you know, I I don't usually put a lot of music, but if you don't like it in a, you know, when I'm sewing or a quiet time, then you can mute it. Um, You can fast forward it. You can do whatever it is. So they have more of that control. And then we have the interaction. Um, So I've loved that. And it's, it's just been great to be able to interact on a different platform in a different way. And when you say interact on YouTube, so I keep hearing about YouTube, I have got to look into this. But um, when you say interact on YouTube, is it through the comments? Or is it like your live? No, mainly comments. I haven't done lives yet. I haven't gotten the <laughs> the nerve to do it yet. Um, but mainly through the comments. And then from those comments, I try to respond to the comments. Sometimes there's a lot of them, but people will ask questions and, um, you know, I'll try to answer them there. Or even I've, I, I'll see the best suggestions from other people too. They'll say, Oh, you know, I tried this and I did this instead. And it's like, Oh, that's a great idea. I never thought of that. So I get a lot out of it too. So it's just the interaction. And then sometimes those people will message me or email me directly. And maybe they have a question for me, especially if it's about something that I'm telling them about that's, you know, related to a pattern of mine or something like that. So it's been great. And then of course, that's led me into a few other things that I've expanded into from the, in the teaching realm. Do tell. I'm very intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little, I was leading yeah. right into that. <laughs> yeah. um, so I have two, currently two online courses. They're, they're both in wait list mode right now. They're closed for enrollment, but I have mastering half square triangles and then a perfect piecing workshop. And so the perfect piecing came out of Um, my love-hate relationship of the quarter-inch seam allowance. And I had the hardest time when I started out um, getting the the perfect, you know, whether it was quarter-inch or scant quarter-inch seam. Um, I actually started quilting um, doing foundation paper piecing. And people always tell me I do that. I did it backwards (laughs) because usually you do that later, but I couldn't sew in a straight line. I couldn't sew a quarter inch seam. So I was like, Oh, I'll just sew on this line that's printed on the paper and it'll be great. And it worked for me. Um, But I've learned tips and tricks. And again, just like I said before that, you know, like when reading a certain pattern, my brain just wouldn't necessarily comprehend it the way other people would. So showing someone here's, you know, all of these different tips and this is what's important and those types of things. That's what I can offer in my courses. And that's why I I decided to offer those two courses. I have a few others um, planned for maybe later this year, maybe first of 2024, but I've just been having such a good time there. Um, Like I said, it, it helps me to really add value instead of just what we see on social media. And the other thing about social media, and I know I'm, it seems like I'm bashing social media, but like I said, I love it, but it's just so hard to navigate. But 
you're, you only see so many accounts, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, and especially, you know, we're trying to spend time outside, you know, away from our phones. So you may only see, you know, just a small sliver of your followers or the people that you're following. And that really is upsetting too. even people that I've favorited, I won't see their, their stuff. And I've had people message me and they're like, I didn't know anything about, you know, blah, 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 something that just happened. And it's just because, you know, whatever platform it is and social media has just chosen, um, you know, what they're going to see that day. So the courses and the YouTube channel, and then my membership has really allowed me to, I want to take them away and let's interact in a different way. And you have a membership. You just kind of snuck that in there. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I really, I just realized we didn't talk about that yet, but I did. That was new. Um, last month I launched that and I'll be opening the doors. It's every quarter. Very cool. Um, Yes. What platform are you using for the courses and the membership? Well, being the over researcher that I am, Mm -hmm. I researched everything out there. I almost went with Kajabi, but I ended up choosing Circle. Hmm. Um, It's circle.so. And it's a great platform for and actually I can add my courses in there at some point too. Oh, very Um, cool. I haven't done that yet, but um, it's a really great platform because it allows you to add different forums. And then I have a resource library and then their monthly patterns. And I wanted the member. I didn't want just a membership, like a block of the month or anything like that. Again, I wanted to tie in the education piece. Mm -hmm. So I provide tutorials and videos for each monthly pattern. And then like we're having, we're having a live workshop actually tomorrow um, for the members. And we're going to talk about how to not necessarily write your own quilt patterns, but how to plan. So if you have a 16 inch block, what can you do with that? Like you don't necessarily need a full quilt pattern to do something with that. If you find a block that you need or that you like. Mm -hmm. Um, So okay, I can take that block and maybe I put three together and make a table runner or I want to quilt this size. So that means I need to add three inch borders and, and things like that. So I'm trying to, to make, like I said, not just from the pattern perspective, but the education piece as well inside the membership. I, I'm i really blown away by some re- amazing things that are happening here. So my question right now is how... How how do I say this in the right way? How, why haven't <laughs> this is coming across the wrong way? But okay, let me say it this way: a lot of okay. people hold themselves back, and they they get in their own heads, and they're like, "Well, I can't do this. I can't do this." And it's really just about jumping in and doing it. How have you been able to just jump in and do it? I just don't see a lot of people doing that. And here you are, like you're opening these courses. You've got a membership. You've reached. You got to magazines. We haven't even talked about your mm-hmm. brand ambassador for Baby Lock, which we will. Mm-hmm. So, like, how have you gotten the nerve to do this? You know, I wish I had the perfect answer, um, and but I don't. I think it's just you know, I'd say you know, it's believing in yourself and just putting yourself out there. But then there are certainly days where I'm like, like with the baby luck announcement today, Mm -hmm. I'm like, who am I? I mean, I think we're always going to have that little voice in the back of our heads that think that. And I think the important thing is to just remember that everybody started somewhere. Mm -hmm. And and everybody has something to offer. So whether, and I, I have people tell me that like on YouTube, they'll say, I've been quilting for 40 years and I never knew this. And it's like, well, that's amazing because I look at things differently and I bet you can teach me a lot too. So it just realizing that everyone has something to offer and to just put it out there because the worst they can tell you is no. Yep. And I've had, I've had a couple of things that I have on my, uh, my list of business goals. And I've had these people tell me no multiple times. And guess what? I will keep emailing them yep. and I'll say, remember me, uh, you know, I'm asking again, see if this is a good time for this collaboration. Um, and just seeing what happens because I, what I, one thing that I have noticed is a lot of brands out there, they're looking for, you know, just the, what we would think of ourselves, just an everyday quilter or an everyday pattern designer. You're no one special. You don't have to be, you know, the one person that everybody knows about to be special. And 
um, I've been, I've had two quilts in art gallery fabrics lookbooks. And that was very early on. And literally that was just me sending in my little mock-up and saying, I really like this this fabric collection and I'd really love to be in the lookbook. I mean, literally, that's all it was. And, you know, they like it and we, we all just have so much to add. And so I think trying to remember that, you know, I may not have it all together, but, and, you know, and I may not, I know I don't know everything, um, but just to put it out there and just try because they're going to say no, maybe, and maybe they won't. Mm -hmm. And if they say no, there's nothing wrong. Sure. It's going to hurt. I've been turned down for things that I really, really wanted. And then I'm like, well, you know what? That was for a reason. Maybe it's not the right time for me. Maybe that wasn't the right opportunity. Yeah. And just trying to remember that. Well, whenever those things do happen, please reach out and be like, hey, remember on the podcast when I thought I wanted that thing, it happened and here it is because I'm dying to know. But there you go. <laughs> let's chat about Baby Lock. So how yes. how did you know you wanted to work with Baby Lock and like what did that look like to become a brand ambassador for you? Well, I actually, my first machine was a baby lock and I still have her. And, um, I, I did subsequently buy a different brand of machine, um, wanting some different features. And it's funny because I think probably one of the first videos that I'm going to do is about choosing the right machine because I'm the type that I will get distracted by everything else other than what I need to be focused on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> um, I bought my baby lock jazz too. That was my first machine. And I was like, Oh, this is great throat space. And it's, and it's just an amazing machine. And then there were some different things that I wanted that it didn't have. So that's when I went to a different manufacturer and I do love that machine. But now I find myself like I've been doing a lot more with, free motion applique because I'm an or an orophil ambassador as hmm. well. Look Sorry. at you. You just keep slipping and in these things. <laughs> I know. I'm just sliding it right in there. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> um, that was a shock to me too. I was just like, who am I for them to choose? But again, we're just, it's just makers. Yeah. And that's the great thing. And these brands believe in, in those of us who are just trying our hardest and putting ourselves out there and creating things. Um, so I, I've started some free motion applique, which I really enjoy. It's just fun because you don't have to be precise and you can just have fun with the fabrics and the thread. And so I was wanting a different machine that would help me with some different stitches. And I was like, you know what? I, I need to buy a better baby lock. And I, I knew I wanted to go back to um, one of their, their other machines. And I went back and forth and then it just, you know, kind of popped in my head. You know, I've been doing things with, um, with Orifel, like I mentioned, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to see if, you know, and I knew that you were an ambassador, mm -hmm. but I, you know, certain companies have different requirements and sometimes they open, um, applications like Orifel opens applications. And so there's a, a window of time. Sometimes, you know, they don't have those. So I wasn't sure about baby lock and, um, I know someone else that's a baby lock educator. And, um, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to email them and just see. And it's funny because I actually did that um, maybe a year ago, mm -hmm. I think. And they told me, no, yeah. thank you very much, but no. And I was okay. I'm like, okay, nothing, you know, I'm still here and yep. going to keep trucking on. Um, and then just recently I was like, you know what, I'm going to try again. And I emailed them and, you know, answer their questions. They have a little application and then they accepted me. So I am thrilled because it gives me the opportunity to, to have even more information that I can share. Mm -hmm. um, probably it'll be some on my blog, but mostly YouTube, I think. And of course there'll be things on social media, but I'm really excited about the, the possibilities of what I can offer on YouTube with it. Oh, true. A lot of people have questions. Yeah. About, you know, machines like, what do I buy? And what does this do? And 
you know, they're, they don't know how to use some of the features and things like that. So, And I'm, I'm really curious now I'm just going on a baby lock tangent, but when I joined, <laughs> it was like, you know, the pandemic, they had stopped travel, but they used to have an in-person once a year training and showing you stuff. I'm like, please do that again in person. How fun mm-hmm. would that be? So hopefully. that would be great. Fingers I hope crossed. so. Yeah, absolutely. But we'll see. But congrats. I mean, it, that's, it was the same for me. Like when I first reached out, they said no. And I was like, man, and I reached out again and they remembered, they were like, you know, we really love that you were persistent with this and you know, that you're not just out there fishing for any machine company that will take you, but you really wanted baby lock. And, um, so persistence. And then I'm curious, this is, I mean, I mean, this question coming from a good place and as, as encouragement, have you experienced people saying, oh, I can't believe you're charging for this or I don't, any kind of, that's not the proper way to do this technique or anything like that? H- has that happened to you? And if so, do you have advice for people? Because I think that's one of the fears that holds people back is like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't want that, you know? Yes. the Yes. The judging and the quilt police, as we call them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think sometimes it's a little bit more on social media. And I think that's because people are there for the, you know, the instant gratification of just watching someone do something and then moving on to the next video or, or post. Um, but I've had, God, the biggest thing I hear is when I make half square triangles in a different way, it's always like, you're sewing on the bias. And it's like, Okay, so does yeah. that mean you never do it because you're right. going to be sewing on the bias? I just won't do it ever. And it's like, no. So guess what? I have a video that shows you how to prepare your fabrics to minimize that. And, and here are tips to minimize it because I'm still going to do it. So how do I make sure that it comes out um, looking good still, right? So I really try to ignore that. There's sometimes that you know, I do see comments and they're just unnecessary. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just the nature of our world today anyway. And sometimes I have to just read the comment and um, take a little while to process it. And I always try to ask myself, you know, like, do they have a point? Mm-hmm. Like, if, are they bringing something up that maybe I truly did not know? Because like I said, I know I don't know everything, obviously. Um, but are they making a good point or is it just nitpicking something or is it just hateful? Because sometimes it, there's absolutely no point to those um, their comments except just to be mean, it seems like. Um, I think some of them, sometimes they don't really know that they're coming across that way. But mm-hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not a psychologist, but <laughs> right. that's the, that I, I really believe that. But um, I just tried to. I think I just take it with a grain of salt and, you know, people will post comments and I'm like, you know what? That's fine. You do your way. If you don't like it, that's fine. Move on. There yeah. are other videos. You just said this in, in a recent uh, podcast. I can't remember um, right now real quick who you were um, talking with, but it's like literally just go on then if you don't, if you don't like it. Mm-hmm. Um, there are other videos if you don't like my style, you know, and I don't say that, um, you know, to be, um, callous or yeah, yeah, callous. I was trying to think of, uh, you know, like, um, cocky or anything like that. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying like, well, this is my way. No, not at all. Um, but just like I said, how my brain functions differently than other people's. If you don't like a a method that I suggested, then you don't have to use that. Mm -hmm. Um, or if you don't like sewing and cutting on the bias, then don't do it. Um, but that doesn't mean that other people aren't going to find value in that. So I think you just have to understand and accept that there are going to be people that just don't like you, period. Yep. Um, I, you know, they even will criticize what I'm wearing or, you know, yep, what yep. I've said, how many times I've said like, or I try not to say, um, as much, or at least edit it out if I do. Right. But there are other things I say, I say like a lot. And <laughs> Which so I bet you it, didn't know until someone pointed it out, exactly. you know, you're like, Oh, I just said like, now that you're saying it, I'm like, Oh gosh, I said it. <laughs> now, now you realize it. And it's true. So it's like, okay, thank you for, for pointing that out, you know, and, and I will take that advice, you know? So I try to, you know, either maybe just ignore the comment if I, you know, feel that that's the best approach, but sometimes I'll just reply back and just say, thanks for the feedback and, you know, okay, yeah. <laughs> go on. 
which I'm curious, do you have a support group? Because I feel like I handle things fairly well after a minute, right? Any, we're human beings and it would be, we'd be crazy to try and kid ourselves that like nothing affects us, you know? Mm -hmm, Um, So, you know, overall, I feel like I roll with things, but I have a support group. I have a therapist. I have a life coach. You know, I've got all the mm-hmm. things. Do you, what is your support system? Unfortunately, it's just my quilty friends um, and sometimes my husband. But of course, my husband is always like, I don't know anything about quilting. That's his standard answer. <laughs> so, And I'm like, you don't have to just sit there and listen, you know, like literally. So um, but mostly it's my my quilty friends that, you know, if I just have something, if I need advice or, you know, there's been several times I've messaged you like as a mentor mm-hmm. and just having people that understand, you know, the actual quilting community, I think helps because then they can give because I'll literally ask somebody, you know, is this ugly? Like, really tell me, is this <laughs> right. ugly? you know, or did I totally mess this up? <laughs> And, and sometimes you need somebody to say, it's not your best, you know, that's right, the, yep. you know, the, the best answer. It's not your best, <laughs> but, um, so that, that's really the best thing. And that's why I love the quilting community because there are so many people, um, you know, I have so many customers that have literally been with me since like the first pattern that I put out and they buy every pattern they participate in every quilt along that I do. Um, you know, there, I have a couple that are in my membership and they're just like the best. And that's what the quilting community is about. It's, it's so big, but then it's so small, you know, and every, it seems like everybody ends up knowing everybody else. And I think too, you know, going back to putting yourself out there, applying for things, you know, someone will end up knowing someone, And, um, like I have a local fabric shop, that's been a really great resource for me. Like if I have questions about, you know, a certain fabric company and they're like, Oh, you know, here, check out, um, you know, this person, maybe you can ask them. Um, my first wholesale distributor came from a recommendation. It was someone that I met, um, at a fabric shop opening and, um, she was like, Oh my gosh, I love your patterns. I'm going to send them over to so-and-so that, that handles our wholesale distribution. And she gave her my information and then they asked to carry them wholesale. So awesome. it's just a matter of relationships. And, and so I think that's just where you get your support as well. It's just people that are, that know it, um, because it, like I said, it is a community, even though it seems really huge sometimes. The world is smaller than we think, you know, it Mm -hmm. just is. So, and I love the connections and those friendships. So that's, that is beautifully said. Yes. I have, okay. I noticed way back, you said that you have your membership in circle.so. So. Mm -hmm. Is your course, and you said eventually you want to bring your courses there. Where do your courses live currently? Right now they're on Thinkific. And that was the best platform when I was starting out because I didn't have a lot. And I was like, okay, let's just see where I can put these. And it is a great platform when you're just starting out and you don't want to invest because, you know, if, if you're not selling anything, you're not selling any courses, then of course you're spending your own money. Um, So it was a a very good platform. And I, I thought about staying there, but I when I was looking at circle, I, I wanted to bring everything over to one place. So Mm -hmm. that's, um, and that's why, you know, like I mentioned, I had looked at Kajabi. I know that's where you are. Yeah. I had looked at that, but there were some parts of their community that I just didn't like. And they say that things are coming soon. Um, but I, I changed my mind a lot for things. Like I said, I I completely (laughs) over-researched this and took forever to make a decision. And I was like, Ladine, you just, (laughs) just make a decision. (laughs) So I finally did. Um, But I've been really happy with it. And then they have increased what they offer on the course side. So that's why I've been looking at that more so that if somebody logs in, then they can see everything. So I know that there's a few different platforms that do that, but circle is just more, um, it's more interactive. And I think it's also visually simpler as Mm -hmm. well. Nice. Yeah. Mm, now I'm intrigued. Oh, but one thing <laughs> I've learned, I've got to put my blinders on, right? Like I know. You pick the thing and go with it. So I know I shan't be looking. <laughs> <laughs> so I am curious for, I mean, you've given some great 
tips already, but is there any more advice that you have for a quilterpreneur who's just starting out? Probably, I, I think the biggest thing that I'd have to go back and, and look through and say, okay, you know, what have I done? Because people ask me that. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. I'm just showing up. But that's the key is showing up and it's consistency. Um, you know, life happens. I, I mentioned earlier, I've had um, a uh, an injury that I had some complications. And so it's basically taken me out of commission for some of my thing, my quilty things for about a year now. So like I haven't been able, I missed quilt market last year. I missed quilt con. Um, I'm, I'm still able to quilt and do things, but not as efficiently. So I didn't release as many patterns as I wanted to last year. Um, but even with those challenges, I still wanted to show up for everybody because, you know, not that anyone is looking for me, but when I do post and I, I do add value, I see that that's appreciated. And I think that's what's important is for people to understand that you're doing something, like we mentioned earlier, not just to make money as a business. You're doing it because you enjoy the community and you enjoy the people. And I that's why that. I like when people ask me about YouTube, I'm like, or, you know, free patterns that I give out or the, you know, on my blog, I'm like, yes, I do it. And it's, it's free. I'm like, really? Yes, it is. But you know, that's what I enjoy doing. And I want to be able to give back. And that's what brings me joy in, in yeah. writing the patterns and in providing the education is what brings me joy. And I want to be able to share that. So, you know, finding, of course, this is something that you always recommended mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and still do is to find your niche. Um, I still feel like I'm, you know, narrowing that down a little bit further. Um, but you, you have to start somewhere like yeah. you always recommend. And so that, I think that's the biggest thing. And then pick a place. I, I heard this, um, I have several, um, business related podcasts that I like to listen to. And even though they're not quilt related, the business part of this, of them really help. And I can't remember who it was, but they, made the comment that you need to pick a platform or pick a place online where you can show up consistently and then do it. Yep. And, and that has been so important. So don't feel like you have to do all the things. Don't, I'm, I'm going to write quote patterns and I'm going to be on Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest and this and that. And don't, if you can't do it all, then don't set yourself up to do that. Yes. So pick a place and show up consistently and then do it and um, use the tools that are out there. So like I mentioned, my health issues, like there are times I wasn't, I wasn't able to post, but I have, um, I would utilize a scheduler app um, for posting on Instagram so that I can show, hey, I've been working on this quilt. I can't post it at the proper time Instagram tells me to or anything like that, but you can schedule that so that you don't have to remember that you want to post it that day. So from a business standpoint, um, that was a huge saver for me because um, I could show the process of a quilt and maybe tease that quilt pattern. And, um, you know, by the time the poster are scheduled, I'm already done with the quilt technically. Yeah. So, you know, using those tools and, and, picking a place, like I said, and showing your value. That's what people want to want to see. And that's what I want to see as a, a consumer as well. I don't want to, I just, you know, you doing what you want to do. I want you to do something for me. And if I'm going to watch a video or buy a course, it has to be something that I'm interested in. So I want to be able to offer that as a business owner too. Oh, I love that. Well, and you know, if let's say you do get sick and you're mm -hmm. consistent, you know, looks a little different. Like maybe you're not able to show up every day, but you show up once a week or even once a month, mm -hmm. we'll say. Right. If you're showing up and providing value and giving someone something that helps them, they're mm -hmm. never going to be like, where have you been? They're like, oh, yay, you're here. Awesome. Exactly. You know? Yeah. 
<laughs> right. They're not keeping track of you. <laughs> they're, they're not, not. going to say, it, you know, it's Wednesday. Where is Elizabeth? <laughs> right. They're not, they're not doing that. They're moving on with their life too. But like you said, as soon as you do post something, they're going to be like, oh, that's great. And, you know, maybe they do realize I haven't seen something from her in a while or, you know, things like that. And so life does happen. Um, and that's just the struggle of owning a business and making sure that you have things in, in place to accommodate, you know, when those changes do happen. But um, like I said, like I, Pinterest has been on my list the, probably <laughs> since I started my business <laughs> and I haven't been able to fully engage. So I actually don't really engage on Pinterest. Um, right. I know I should. I, no, no, I love that. <laughs> and you yeah, have, you're but, growing, you're having success and you're not, right. not there yet, you know? Right. And Facebook is the same way. So, you know, Instagram and Facebook, it's all meta, right? Right. But I don't, I, I have not put a lot of effort into growing my Facebook page. Now I do cross post. Mm -hmm. like when I post on Instagram, I'll cross post it in Facebook, but I don't, I don't really focus there because Instagram was where my interest is. Cause just like everyone else, I scroll, you know, mindlessly scroll and look at pretty pictures too. So that's where I found it was easier for me personally, because that's where I was too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there are places that I would like to expand and of course they're on my list, but um, I think just not feeling like you have to do it all. Yes. Because it doesn't mean that, you know, you're not going to be successful if you can't be everywhere to everyone because you're never going to be. Exactly. And I mean, without saying numbers, would you say that your quilting career now is fairly lucrative? Like it's able to support your family in a way? Or I, I mean, how, how can you speak to that at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not yet. And I think that's because the expenses that I've created for myself, we can say, you know, mm -hmm. with building a plat, building a membership platform, um, you know, you want a, an email service provider that, you know, that a platform where you can support landing pages and, you know, your lead magnets and all those things. And so setting all of that up, um, I think was a big step for me. And also getting more into my paper patterns, that's a big expense. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's one area that I'm really trying to build is my wholesale business side of things with the paper patterns. Awesome. And so, yeah, but um, I will say that you have always been right in that the email list is the best indicator of your success. Like I have people that will say, you know, wow, you had a collaboration with so-and-so that's, you're so lucky. And it's like, yes, but free, you know, a free ruler mm -hmm. doesn't pay my bills. Exactly. And, um, and then also, you know, followers on Instagram, they're not necessarily your customers. They yep. just like your pictures. Like there's a few accounts that I follow. They're not even quilt related and I love their stuff. I will watch every single one of their videos, but I'll never buy what they sell yep. because I'm not interested, but I like their, you know, their, their materials. And so that's another thing to remember that it's not always, and you've said that before on, on the podcast that it, it's just because you've made it, you know, and you're doing well and your business is thriving. You don't have to have 500,000 followers on Instagram um, yep. and vice versa. It's, it's not an equal. It's the, the metrics that people can't see. It's that the mm -hmm. email list, which isn't as sexy, you know, people are like, well, but right. oh, I got to have a bigger audience, but no, right. it's the email list that will, that's the health of your business right there. Mm -hmm. So it is. And then not getting your feelings hurt when people unsubscribe. Oh, they <laughs> will. Like, Every time. Yeah. Every that time. was always hurtful to me. I'm like, oh, you know, 10 people unsubscribe yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, no, Ten, it that's just nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that just is an example. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> um, but just being able to say, you know what, it doesn't mean that I'm not doing a good job. And it also doesn't mean that they're not going to buy from me in the future. It just means that maybe they're like me and you have way too many emails and they just don't want to hear it all. Yeah. So, you know, talking about expenses, that was one thing that I knew I needed to upgrade was, um, the options that I had of not is because some of the providers out there, they only have an unsubscribe option, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be able to say, okay, maybe you don't want to hear from me as much. What do you want to hear about? Do you want to hear about my courses or do you want to hear about pattern releases or, 
new stuff on the blog, you know, you choose what you want to hear from me. And so maybe you don't hear from me as often. So that was another expense where I said, you know, I need to have this in place. And that was important to me because I would notice that people would say, you know, I don't really want to hear about this. It's like, well, that's okay. You know, here. Yeah, exactly. So So are you with ConvertKit? I am. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They are so robust. Like they are. Yeah, they are. I was with Flowdesk for a long time. Um, and then I thought it, about going to MailChimp, but it's too mm. expensive for the number of subscribers. It's yeah. just is ConvertKit uh, not as expensive as MailChimp? If you compare the, your number of subscribers, I don't think it is. Wow, and, I mean, ConvertKit is way better. Yeah, where I am, I, d- I don't think that it is at all. Um, and also MailChimp. So again, um, just the way that my brain functions, I don't like the the um, the platform of MailChimp. No, it's just neither. harder for me. Yeah. It's harder for me to understand, um, subscribers and tags and things like that. And, and I want to be able to, you know, automate things because I, I like to work. I have a full-time job. So I do my quilty business in the mornings. Um, I'm a morning person. So I'll do things in the morning before work. And so if I want to, you know, write a few emails, I'm going to do that in the morning, but I may not want to send them out right then and there. Yeah. So mail, MailChimp is just a little bit too um, too confusing for me, but ConvertKit's been great. Yeah, it's very, I mean, I had MailChimp and then ConvertKit and now I have Flowdesk, but ConvertKit, mm-hmm. it was so powerful. I was like, I'm using like the tip of the iceberg yes. of what, yes. you know, <laughs> there's a that's lot. That's the way there. I feel. <laughs> yes, that's the way. They'll send out things about webinars and I'm like, that is so interesting, but I don't have time. <laughs> yeah, and but I, like you said, I'm, the, the automations and things like that. But it's nice to know that you have that so that you can grow. And that's why I left Flowdesk, even mm-hmm. though it's a great, a great starter option. It's a great price. I got in at the, like the beta testing pricing. So it was yep. super low. I knew you were, you yep. started then too. And um, that was great. It's still a great price. Um, and it, and it's something great to get you started, but when you start wanting to, you know, see analytics, like mm-hmm. with Some my membership, analytics. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So membership, I had X number of people on a wait list and they didn't sign up. Well, why didn't you yeah. sign up? What can yeah. I do? What can I do to make that better? Or, you know, is there anything, or maybe you're just not interested anymore or it's not the right time. Yeah, with ConvertKit too, it's way easier to go in and send to the people who haven't opened it or everyone who's clicked on this mm. button, send them an email where Flota is. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. We'll see if I end up biting the bullet <laughs> and like going back to that. But talking about it, I'm like, mm, maybe I will. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. see, I've distracted you again. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like Elizabeth, put on the blinder. So. <laughs> well, I can relate to you in that way. So for our listeners who want to find you, where can they find you? Yes. So my blog and website is sugarstitchesquiltco.com. And then on all the social platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and then YouTube, I'm at Sugar Stitches Quilt Co. Awesome. And then the wait list for my courses and for Quilt Academy are on my website too. There's links there. And I will put those, all those links to the the wait list and all of your social media in the show notes for the podcast as well. So people can find it easily that way. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much for coming and chatting. It was just a pleasure and I love catching up and hearing all that you're doing. You just kept slipping stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And it hasn't been that long. So I'm I'm excited and I'm very thankful. And thank you. Ladine, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really am so inspired by all that you do. And after we we ended the recording, Ladine and I chatted and it was so funny. She was like, I'm really, you know, I'm struggling with this and that and some things that I struggle with as well. And it's just so fun to see that even though we both have things, you know, that we struggle with, but she has been doing such an amazing job. I mean, you heard right here how she's doing. And we chatted some more about things that are going to be happening on the road, what she's going to be focusing on. And it's just, she's just so inspiring. So if you don't follow Ladine already, or if you're curious to see about her courses or her membership, go ahead and check out the show notes, or you can go to her Instagram account at Sugar Stitches Quilt Co. And go ahead and follow Ladine and check out all that she's doing. 
So thank you so much for being here on the Craft Your Career podcast. We'll be right back here next Friday with a brand new episode. Until then, have a wonderful week. 